Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. I am Miss Merle, and I am going to be speaking to you today about RA5527. To begin, uh, this uh, particular RA is uh, essential because uh, it sets all the guidelines for medical technology. It defines the practice itself and the scope of the, uh, of the profession. Uh, whenever you are wondering about what are the requirements of uh, passing the board exam, what instances can lead to license revocation, what is a foreign reciprocity, and uh, except for example, who directly supervises med techs in the laboratory, what is the difference between a medical technologies and that of a medical laboratory technician, and what is the starting age for the issuance of the certificate of registration? Well, all of these questions, if you get them in your mind, can derive all their answers from this RA. So please remember RA5527. So uh, this uh, Republic Act number 5527 is uh, the one is an act that needs the registration of uh, medical technologists and it defines the practice of uh, medical technology and then uh, on june this one please don't forget common board exam question uh, june 21 1969 it was approved and was amended by uh, three statutes we have ra6138 uh, two pds uh, pd498 and pd1534 and then, uh, well, medical technology is a profession. Then you might wonder why is a medical technology important? Well, uh, medical laboratory science provides clues uh, that are key in the diagnosis and treatment of disease or injury. And lab professionals are the detectives of the healthcare world. Well, they provide clues that are key in the diagnosis and treatment of disease or injury and assist in the maintenance of healthy lifestyles. Have you uh, ever been to a play? When the audience come to see the show, they see the actors and actresses uh, perform, right? What they don't see are the many crew members who work backstage in like on lighting and the sound and in the sets. Well, these people don't get to take a bow at the end of the show, but they are very important to the success of the play. Well, in the hospital, the medical technologists are like crew members in a play. Patients don't often see them, but of course, they're very vital members of the healthcare team. And um, medical technologists, or also known as clinical lab scientists, are professionals who work in the laboratory hospital laboratory uh, they perform a wide range of tests and doctors make many of their decisions about diagnosis and treatment of disease based on laboratory test results it is the responsibility of the med tech to provide accurate and precise data or data because uh, they may hold life and death in their hands the medical technologies must know when results are incorrect and when is the need that it has to be rechecked. Well, uh, medical technologies do everything from simple uh, pregnancy tests to monitoring antibiotic uh, drug therapy to complex testing that uncovers disease like diabetes, cancer and AIDS. And right now, which is uh, the thing is very relevant, we have PCR testing for uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is the causative agent for our uh, COVID-19. And uh, going back, uh, medical technologies, they do all these uh, testing by operating microscopes, uh, complex electronic uh, equipment, computers, and what else, and precision instruments costing millions of dollars. And the good thing, uh, since a medical technology is a profession, the uh, USA, United States of America recognizes medical technologists as professionals. So, so much for the chit chat. So uh, section one, the title is the Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1969. And for section two, uh, we will be defining terms like uh, what is 
the scope of the practice of medical technology, who is a pathologist, and what's the uh, role of the medical technologist in the lives of pathologists, what's the difference between a medtech and that of a medical laboratory technician, and um, how medical technology training labs are accredited, who accredits them, what go government organizations or departments are responsible. And we have also the schools of medical technology as recognized legally in the Philippine setting. So we have uh, the first one, what is medical technology? Well, uh, it is an auxiliary a branch of a lab medicine. It deals with the uh, examination by various uh, chemical, microscopic, bacteriologic, and other medical lab procedures and techniques. But what's the most important here is that this phrase, will I aid a physician, will aid or help the doctors in the diagnosis study and treatment of disease and in the promotion of health in general. So in short, clinical laboratory science, also called medical laboratory science or medical technology, is the health profession that provides laboratory information and services needed for the diagnosis and treatment of disease. So for next, we are rolling to section two, practice of medical technology. So uh, we can say that a person shall be deemed to be in the practice of medical technology when he or she who shall for a fee, salary, and other uh, means of receiving money or compensation or reward, to be paid or given directly or indirectly or through another renders or gives any of the following professional services for the purpose of for the purpose of again helping or aiding the doctors or physicians in the diagnosis study and treatment of diseases and in the promotion of health in general so uh well, uh, this is a long list. Well, these are the professional services that can be performed or performed by a medical technologist. So we have uh, medical technologists do really examine secretions and excretions. Um, Medtechs examine a stool, feces, a blood, saliva for iontophoresis, and tissues, of course, for histopathology by various electronic, chemical, microscopic, bacteriologic, hematologic, serologic, immunologic, nuclear, and other lab procedures and techniques, either take note, manual, or automated. But the good thing with uh, Filipino medical technologists, we are really, uh, we don't have much automation in our labs. So uh, we are really used to on doing things manually. And it's a, uh, an edge because uh, whenever there is an absence of an electrical supply in a particular area, then um, surely med techs can still uh, go on with the work. So not much work will be impeded in cases of uh, blackouts or burnouts. And second, um, blood banking procedures also med techs do that. I, I will be explaining some of these things later with blood banking, parasitology, those parasites, fungi, microbes. Through those procedures and techniques, we also have uh, the tissues and the cells. So histopathologic and cytotechnology. And not only uh, in the clinical lab, but uh, we also are, uh, well, soon if we'll become med techs, uh, Medical technologists can perform clinical research that involve uh, patients, of course, or humans, human beings that uh, need the use of and or application of medical technology knowledge and procedures. And the thing, uh, Metax cannot perform without, of course, preparing and standardizing reagents, standards, and stains, and others, provided such such are exclusively for the use of the of their own laboratory. And uh, Metax also perform QC or quality control. And uh, also this one, uh, Metax collect and preserve specimens. Well, collection is has to be done perfectly, but uh, 
to really have the specimen, it has to be properly preserved. So uh, for you to have a little look on what we are talking here about the professional services that can be uh, performed by a medical technologist, so for example, uh, blood banking, uh, a medical technologist in blood banks must be especially accurate and organized. Blood bankers type blood and match it to donor units of blood for transfusions. Well, um, a mistake in blood bank can be very dangerous because of a medical technology. If, for example, if a med tech gives the wrong type of donor blood, well, it can be very vital. And everyone has different antibodies in their blood, which can react against blood types and other than uh, or what blood types other than their own. And um, most people are, for example, type O. Other blood types include A, B, and AB. And in addition to ABO types, everyone has an RH typing too. So you can either be RH positive or RH negative. And RH types are important in transfusions as well as pregnancy. Because, uh, well, an RH positive a baby may become sick or even die if the mother is RH negative. So the med tech plays an important role in preventing these problems so the medical technologist can type the mother and determine if she needs a drug known as for example rogam which can prevent the problems with the baby but the uh, this will become your problem if you will have blood banking in your fourth year and then we also have for example a microbiology so uh, the medical technologist's main concern in microbiology is bacteria and they are there are many different types of bacteria that cause infections. It is the technologist's job to determine what type of bacteria are causing the problem in the patient and what type of antibiotics will work best against the bugs. And well, uh, the technologist also looks for fungi and parasites. Well, infections can happen just about anywhere in the body. So this means that the technologies in microbiology must deal with many different types of specimens. The technologist uh, takes the specimen and puts it onto plates filled with uh, nutrients for the bacteria and fungi to grow on. This is called culturing. And then they look at what grows and use the physical appearance of the growth and different chemical tests to determine what type of organism is growing. So technologists will also look at the growth under a microscope or scope to see what type of bacteria is present. So the different types of cultures done at most hospital labs include urine, stool, blood, and sputum. Well, everyone has bacteria that are normally present in stool, sputum, and on the skin that can also grow in cultures. So uh, the medical technologist must be able to determine which organisms on the plates are causing disease and which are just part of the normal flora. Well, guys, uh, flora means that the microorganisms that normally grow on the body to compete with disease-causing organisms and prevent the disease causers from growing. Another one is uh, we have chemistry or clinical chemistry. In chemistry, uh, a medical technologist measures many different proteins and electrolytes, as well as drug levels used to monitor patient therapy. Uh, a medical technologist working in the chemistry department will tell the doctor many things, for example, um, how much uh, sugar is in the patient's blood, how much protein protein is in the patient's urine or whether or not the patient has a tumor. So much of the testing in chemistry is done on automated analyzers and chemistry is possibly the largest and most rapidly changing our area of laboratory because of the variety of automation available. Methods used in chemistry um, include things like electrophoresis, uh, spectrophotometry, nephilometry, immunoassays, and electrochemistry. Sounds complicated, right? Well, it's a mouthful, but uh, that's why medical technologists have to be educated. And we also have uh, urinalysis. So it's uh, one of the oldest diagnostic procedures in the laboratory. Uh, it is the analysis of urine and urine is considered to be a fluid made by the waste the materials of the blood. Urine is made in the kidneys, stored in a bladder and excreted by way of the urethra. 
an adult's kidney can filter over a liter of blood every minute, and most of this is returned to the circulation, and only one liter of urine is made in the course of a whole day. So, tests of urine can determine a lot of things about the health status of an individual and electrolyte imbalance, kidney damage, UTI, and diabetes are just a few of the problems that can be found in urinalysis. So a medical technologist in urinalysis looks at the physical properties of the urine, such as color and clarity, and they also look at the chemical composition of urine. And this usually uh, tests for blood, protein, glucose, and WBCs or white blood cells. And uh, finally, the technologies or medtech looks at the urine under a microscope and looks for bacteria, crystals, and blood cells that are not supposed to be in the urine. Well, so I've just provided those things to you so that you can have a glimpse of the things that you might be doing in the near future. Moving on, we have this one, uh, the pathologist. So who is a pathologist? A pathologist is a, a duly registered physician who is, take note, registered, not a quack doctor, and specially trained in the methods of laboratory medicine. For the gross and microscopic study, gross, sorry, and the interpretation of tissues, secretions, and excretions of the human body and its functions in order to, again, to diagnose disease, follow its course, determine the effectivity of treatment, ascertain the cause of death, and advance medicine by means of research. Well, uh, moreover, uh, pathologist is a highly specialized, again, I'm just trying to let you know that a highly specialized physician, registered physician, specially trained, well, whose uh, primary area of expertise is in the study of body tissues and body fluids. Well, it is uh, important how to say, to understand their primary duties, which include, uh, well, they oversee the management of hospital and clinical labs. They examine and interpret laboratory tests. They sending, uh, send reports to order other physicians to guide medical treatment and patient care. And they uh, can also interpret uh, histologically samples of tissues that are collected during surgery. Well, our dean does this, the past dean. And then also uh, they are, they can determine if samples are cancerous or malignant or benign or, or, and or uh, if surgery is needed. And they also perform like this one, autopsies to identify or confirm disease and determine cause, manner, and mechanism of death. We also have uh, this one, who are medical technologists? Who is a medical technologist? So is a person who engages in the work of, of course, medical technology. And always remember under, under the supervision of a pathologist or in areas or in places in which there is no registered pathologist, well, licensed physicians are allowed by the Department of Health to supervise medical technologists. Okay, and a medical technologist must be able or was able to uh, pass a prescribed course, which is a bachelor, bachelor of Science in Medical Technology or Bachelor of Science in Hygiene of uh, oh, C. <clears throat> Sorry. And well, a medical technologist is a highly skilled health professional who tests and, analyze, and uh, analyzes blood and other body fluids and tissue samples. Uh, medical technologists are responsible for, again, operating and maintaining the equipment used to analyze specimens and ensuring that tests are completed in a correct and timely manner. And then this one, next, a medical laboratory technician. So uh, according to the law, is an MLT is a person who not being a graduate of BSMT or BSH, but have passed the corresponding civil service examination, but performs the work of a medical the work of a medical technologist. However, medical laboratory technicians are under the supervision of both the uh, pathologist and that of the medical technologist. So it's the head supervised by the patho and then Next, we have the med techs, and the third one will be the medical laboratory technician. 
So again, if the medtechs are under the direct supervision of the pathologist, well, well for MLTs, they are under the direct uh, supervision of firstly and highly by the pathologist and followed by the medical technologist. And then uh, we also have uh, what is an accredited medical technology training laboratory. So any a clinical laboratory, office, agency, clinic, hospital, or sanitarium, which is or are duly approved by the Department of Health or its authorized agency. Well, the role of a clinical lab is to promptly provide highly reliable lab, lab data to satisfy the needs of clinicians involved in medical practice and health man maintenance of a patients. So uh, what are recognized schools of medical technology? So any university, college, or school that offers medical technology course and take note approved by the Commission of Higher Education or CHED upon the recommendation of the Council of Medical Technology Education. And then, uh, what is the composition, the Council of Medical Technology and its composition? So there is hereby established a Council of Medical Technology Education, hereafter referred to as the Council, which shall be composed of the director of the uh, director of higher education as the chairman, the chairman of the PRC or the Professional Regulator Regulation Commission as the vice chairman again and the members include the, the following the director of the bureau of research and laboratories of tuh the chairman and two members of the board of medical technology i'm so sorry but we need to uh, know this and also the representative of the deans of schools of medical technology and public health and also the presidents of the philippine society of pathologists and the philippine association of medical technologists so the members, you have the vice chairman and the chairman and all compose the Council of Medical Technology Education. So uh, as council members, they are also given money, of course, compensation, salary or wage. So what do you mean by compensation? It's the money received by an employee from an employer as a salary or wage, right? And uh, the chairman shall be given uh, 50 pesos per diem which means for each day, which is, uh, each day daily per DM, well, the member shall be, uh, will have 25 pesos each. Well, right now, uh, this uh, sounds crazy because what can you buy with 50 pesos or 25, right? So I think this part of the law needs amendments. It has to be changed. And uh, please take note, that regardless of whether or not uh, these uh, people receive regular salaries from the government. And whenever they are traveling, as long as that travel is in connection with their official duties, they're entitled to receive traveling expenses also. And then the functions of the Council of Medical Technology Education, well, they are there to recommend the minimum required curriculum. So if you are wondering why, uh, before, uh, uh, way back, uh, so many years ago, it used to be BSMT or Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and suddenly the curriculum changed. They added some subjects, removed some other subjects. It became Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science. But the problem with that is um, the internship turned out to be only a six-month internship as compared to the previous uh, BSMT, which is really a one-year or 12-month internship. So uh, the ones responsible for changing those things will be the Council of Medical Technology Education. They are also uh, the ones responsible for in the determination and prescription of the number of students to be allowed to take up medical technology course in each school. So taking it, uh, and this one, the student instructor ratio, ra instructor ratio has to be really followed, but I think it's one to 10 or one is to 15. But right now, actually, uh, we are not uh, following that. So I can say we are unconstitutional. <laughs> no, no, we are not following what the law mandates, especially in our RA 5527. And the council is also responsible for approving medical technology schools. Schools and these schools must surely meet the requirements. 
And whenever they cannot meet the requirements, so there are some schools, especially, no, I will not uh, mention that uh, we're closed because we're not able to meet the requirements as set by the Council of Medical Technology Education. Also, uh, the Council needs medical technology schools to submit an annual report. And this report must uh, show the total number of students and instructors, the list of facilities present for instruction, and the list of their resident uh, graduates and new admissions on or before the month of June. So the council has a lot of functions. And still, uh, under the functions of the council, they are the ones that will inspect the different schools in the country to see or to know whether uh, a high standard of education is maintained in those institutions. They also are there to certify for admission into an undergraduate internship students who have uh, satisfactorily completed three years of BSMT course. And the formulation and recommendation of approval of the refresher course for the applicants who have failed the board examination for the third time. So uh, for example, you took the board exam first, second, and third, but still you have failed, then you really need to take the refresher course to study again. And you might wonder who set uh, this one. So it's the Council of Medical Technology. And they are also there to promulgate and prescribe and enforce needed or necessary rules and regulations for the proper implementation of the foregoing functions. So section six talks about the minimum required course. So the medical technology course shall be at least four years. Include, well, some would want to extend. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it, according to the law, it has to be really at least four years. That includes a 12-month satisfactory internship in accredited laboratories and shall include the following subjects. All these subjects. And including clinical laboratory methods. But I think right now, uh, MedTech no longer has Spanish. And I think you no longer have botany, I think. I'm not sure. But I'm sure that Spanish is no longer present. There are really uh, a lot of things in the sections that need to be changed or amended in RA5527. It's like somehow outdated. It's no longer applicable on what we are having in the present. And also the council is hereby authorized subject to the approval of secretary of commission in higher education to change, remove from, or add to the subjects listed here as the needs and demands of the progress in science of medical technology may require. So that's why some subjects are added and some subjects are omitted. So for example, uh, they have added pharmacology and they have omitted Spanish. So something like that. So again, minimum required course. So this course should at least be four years and the internship has to be a 12 month satisfactory internship but uh way back many years uh, like five years ago or no 10 i'm not sure they have uh had the, they uh some students were able to experience the six month internship only and then we also have the medical technology board composition where there is hereby created a medical technology board under the PRC, which shall thereafter be referred to as the board composed of who? Oh, a chairman. And the chairman must be a pathologist. Oh, and two members who are registered medical technologists who shall be appointed by the president of the Republic of the Philippines. And the medical technology board, the board will have office for three years. And please uh, take note that the uh, provided that the uh, incumbent members will continue to serve until the expiration of their terms. And in cases of uh, death, disability, or removal of a member of the board, his successor shall serve only the balance of the balance of his term. And this one, section eight. 
qualifications of examiners. So the uh, examiners, the ones who will uh, formulate or make the board examinations for medical technology, must be Filipino citizens of a good moral character. What do you mean by good moral character? I will explain that one later. And is a qualified pathologist or a duly registered medical technologist of the Philippines with a degree of BSMT or Bachelor of Science in Hygiene or Public Health. And then must be practicing lab medicine or medical technology for at least 10 years. So if this one is check for you, this one is you, you're having this one and you're a pathologist, but you're just in the practice, for example, for nine years, then you need to wait for another 10 years prior to your appointment so that you will be qualified to become an examiner. And fifth, is not a member of the faculty or any medical technology school for at least two years to avoid biases, right? And to prevent uh, pecuniary interests. So functions and duties of the Board of Medical Technology. Uh, they are for the administration of the act provisions. They administer oaths for the oath taking. They can revoke, they can issue, or they can suspend certificates of registration and for the practice of medical technology and MLTs. And they can also um, investigate conditions that uh, affect the practice of medical technology in the Philippines. And they are there to investigate such violations of RA 5527. And for this purpose, uh, the, um, we have a subpoena and subpoena duches at TechCom to secure appearance of witnesses because uh, let's uh, jump directly. There are two kinds of subpoenas, guys. We have a subpoena at testificandum. We also have a subpoena duches TechCom. So uh, subpoena at testificandum is uh, bringing people to testify before the court or hearing. So you really need to be in the court and testify on something. While uh, subpoena duches tecum, it describes uh, the evidence. So it could be tape recordings, photos, glass, or documents common for medical uh, matax, uh, documents like lab results. Lab results, which must be brought before the court or hearing. And so we have functions and duties of the Board of Medical Technology. Still, we have the draft. They can draft such rules and regulations that are needed to carry out the provisions of RA 5527. And they can determine the adequacy of the technical staff. So uh, if, well, right now the problem of our labs, majority are understaffed. So I hope the Board of Medical Technology can see that that problem. And also to prescribe the qualifications and training of medical technologies. So if you are qualified and what trainings that Medtex must undergo, those who are working in the labs, it's the Board of Medical Technology. It's their role. And they, they are also there to classify and prescribe the qualification and training of the technical staff of clinical laboratories. So uh, when is the time that these uh, the Board of Medical Technology members can be removed? Well, please rem uh, remember, take note that they can all be only be removed by the President of the Philippines. And reasons include like neglect, like negligence, negligence and malpractice. So uh, I, I, need, I think I need to differentiate the two. What is the difference between negligence and malpractice? Well, medical malpractice is the breach of the duty of care by a medical provider or medical facility. While medical negligence applies when a medical provider makes a mistake. Again, negligence applies uh, when a medical provider makes a mistake in treating patients and that mistake results in harm to the patient. So that's malpractice. No, that's, sorry, negligence. But malpractice is the breach of the duty of care by a medical provider or medical facility. And uh, what about uh, 
we have this uh, immoral or dishonorable conduct. Well, it's disgraceful and immoral conduct refers to an act which violates the basic norm or decency or morality and decorum abhorred and condemned by the society. It refers to conduct which is willful. You have the will, you have the motive, flagrant or shameless and which uh, shows a moral indifference to the opinions of the good and respectable members of the community. You might ask me, what are examples of uh, disgraceful, immoral, dishonorable, unethical conduct? So we have like rape, we have sexual abuse, we have sexual mis uh, misconduct or sexual exploitation, that's it. So if ever uh, the board member, one of the board members will be found to have done or committed the following then uh, is can be considered one a ground for rejection however after having been given opportunity to defend himself in a proper and administrative investigation so the true process of law has to be followed here we just can't uh, say that oh you're doing like this and you'll be removed tomorrow no there has to be a true process of law that must uh, be taken first and then next, we have accreditation of schools of medical technology and of training laboratories. So uh, the two uh, in, uh, government agencies or departments that you really need to remember here will be, uh, we have CHED, CHED and DOH. Because CHED shall approve the schools of medical technology while uh, DOH through the Bureau of Research and Laboratories shall approve laboratories for accreditation as training labs for medical technology students and post-grad trainees. So again, who will approve the schools of medical technology? It's CHED. Before it used to be a Department of Education, but now we have the Commission on Higher Education. And uh, for those labs, uh, they will be accredited Training labs will be accredited by the Department of Health through BRL or Bureau of Research and Laboratories. So again, um, you might wonder, what is CHED? So CHED is a Philippine government agency attached to the Office of the President of the Philippines for administrative purposes. Uh, it covers both public and private higher education institutions, as well as degree granting programs in all post-secondary educational institutions in the country. While DOH, is the executive uh, department of the government of the Philippines responsible for ensuring access to basic public health services by all Filipinos through the provision of what quality health care, the regulation of all health services and products. And then section 13 still, uh, what are laboratories? Uh, uh, what are the requirements for those training labs to be uh, uh, accredited? So accredited by the UH or BRL, the laboratory should possess qualified personnel and must be properly equipped. So properly equipped to carry out lab procedures commonly required in the following fields, like we have CC or clinical chemistry, bacteriology or microbiology, serology, parasitology, blood banking, hematolo hematology, clinical microscopy and histopathologic techniques. And uh, section 14 uh, tackles the inhibition against the practice of medical technology. So if you don't have, or you haven't had uh, previously obtained a valid certificate of registration, this one, you need to have, this one is the license, by the way. This one is the COR or the certificate of registration. So no person shall, practice or offer to practice medical technology without having this one first, the certificate of registration. And not all can read it, even if you have uh, passed the board exam already, but if you are below 21 year old, years old, then you cannot uh, obtain your COR. And the law states that. So we also have uh, people in the medical field who are exempted from having the COR. So COR is no longer needed or required in the following those, in those are registered physicians, medical technologists from other countries who came here for consultation or as visiting or exchange 
professors and also medtechs in the service of the United States Armed Forces stationed in the Philippines. So three sets of uh, population, those duly registered physicians, those uh, exchange professors, visiting professors, or, or other medical technologists from other places who came here for consultation, and those who are serving the United States Armed Forces stationed in the Philippines. So section 15, examination. So all applicants for registration as medical technologists shall be uh, required to undergo written examination. So if you want to apply some medical technologies, you need to really have the board exam. And this board exam shall be uh, given in the three, well, in some areas like Baguio and um, what else? Other areas also offer, they have changed, but uh, the three major epicenters for the board exam, sorry. We have Manila, Cebu, and Davao during the months of August or September. And um, well, uh, in at least three newspapers of national circulation, uh, written notices of such examination shall be published. So what are examples of uh, three newspapers of national circulation? We have the Manila Bulletin, we have the Sun Star Daily, and we have the Manila Times. We have also the Philippine Daily Inquirer. So you can just, it will be uh, published there. And then how can you qualify for an examination? So we have, you have, you've got to have a good health and of good moral character. So good health, what do you mean by that? Uh, the state of uh, being vigorous and free from bodily or mental disease. So if you are like having some mental problems which are really severe, then they might not be able to let you qualify for examination. And also good moral character means that a person or individual does not have serious criminal issues in his or her past and that a person generally fulfills his or her obligations under the law. So that one, good health, good moral character for A and B must have completed a course of at least four years leading to the degree of BSMT or BSPH or having graduated from some other profession and, and and has been actually performing medical technology for the last five years prior to the date of examinations. If such performance began prior to June 21, 1969. So the scope of examination, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six major subjects here, but they vary with their relative weights. So for CC, micro, hematology, and blood banking and serology, you've got to have the, uh, they have a really heavier weight as compared to clinical microscopy and that of histopathology techniques. And well, metaclos also are included in the board, included in the board exam. So you, you've got to know or memorize and get familiarized with RAs and presidential decrees and CMOs. So the board shall uh, will prepare. So the board shall prepare the schedule of subjects for examination and to submit the same to the commissioner of PRC at least 30 days before the date of examination. And it's also the board of medical technology that shall compute the general average of each examinee according to the mentioned relative weights of each subject provided, however, that the board may change, add, or remove from the list of subjects or weights above as in progress in the science of medical technology may require. So uh, that's it. So you've got to really uh, take the subject seriously, CC, micro, para, hema, blood banking, and serology. But guys, I'm telling you to be really religious on these subjects, but still your AUBF or clinical microscopy has still, it has still a weight, though lower, but still, if you will fail this one, this one and this one, then it's, you may not be, pass, you, may, you may not be able to pass it, sorry. So the report of rating should be within 120 days after the date of the completion of examination. So this is the most uh, grueling part or crazy part or fearsome part. 
like 120 days after the exam. So I know majority of those who have taken the exam will be unable to sleep properly, sleepless nights, and um, just because of the fear of not making it with the examinations. So the rating and the examination, so this one, please remember because this will really change your lives. To pass the examination, a candidate must have a general average of at least, guys, just at least 75 with no rating below 50 in any of the major subjects. Major subjects, those having 20% as the relative weight. Provided that the candidate has not failed in at least 60% of the subjects computed to their relative weights. See? So just achieve this general rating, average, general average of at least 75. The law does not state that you need to have 95. No, just 75 is needed. And no ratings below 50%. But it's so easy to say that if you're the one taking the exam, things might change too. You'll have a lot of doubts. And then no further examinations unless and until that candidate shall have completed a 12-month refresher course in an accredited laboratory. This applies to those who have uh, taken the board exam for the third time but still have failed. So they need to take a 12-month refresher course. See, after his failure to qualify for the third time and after passing the board exam well the law mandates that all successful examinees shall have a professional oath so you need to take the oath because well this is not really uh, taken seriously in medical technology but in nursing because i'm also from nursing it's really important like uh the the ceremony has to be this oath taking ceremony has to be very uh solemn because the, the, that's the starting point of your professional life. But in medical technology, uh, some actually I've known a lot who haven't taken the oath, their oaths. But according to the law, the law requires us to take it. So us, why? Because I'm hoping that you'll become medic some soon or someday. And then uh, section 21, we have the issuance of certificate of registration. So every applicant who passed successfully passed the board exam will be given a certificate of registration, provided that no certificate shall be issued to any successful, even you are successful, but you haven't reached the age of 21, your CRR will not be given to you, okay? So you need to wait. By the time you will become 21 year old, then that's the time you can receive your COR. This is the COR, uh, both having English and Filipino. And then this one is the license. So what can we see? It's signed by the members of the board, members of the board and the PRC commissioner, the PRC commissioner or chairman. And always remember that this COR must be displayed conspicuously where the med tech works, wherever you are working in a particular lab, you need to post or display this one in somewhere that is very visible conspicuous it has to be conspicuous it has to be uh readily seen okay and then for uh the cor it can be issued without examination issued without examination to persons who have graduated with bsmt or bsph in duly recognized schools of medical technology so it can be given if that uh person was have taken a medical technology education which is substantially the same with ours and then has been practicing for at least three years or those also to all other persons who have who have graduated from other professions taken from other professions but have been actually performing medical technology practice for at for the last eight years. So remember that the COR can be given in these special uh, circumstances without examination, okay? As long as the standard of medical technology education is really the substance is the same with ours, like the uh, course offerings are the same. 
and then has been practicing medical technology for three years prior to June 21, 1969. And then also to all other persons having graduated from other professions that have uh, been actually performing medical technology practice for the last eight years. Also, COR issued us to uh, MLTs without examination. So to any person who upon application and payment of 50 pesos will show evidence to the board that what he or she has passed the civil service has finished, uh, finished sorry, a two-year college course and at least one year of experience as a medical laboratory technician or, for example, has failed to pass the board exam for medical technology but had obtained a general rating of 70. So, for example, you took the board exam but you failed because your rating, your general rating is only 70 but don't, uh, you still have the option if you really would want to become a medical to become a medical technologist or you can stop taking the board exam and then accept that you can become a medical laboratory technician. So it's your choice. I'm not saying it's bad to become an MLT and I'm not also saying that it's good to be really to become really a medical technologist, but it's really up to your choice. But I advise follow what you what your heart desires and what the circumstances in your life tell you and next is for the fees so the board shall charge each, each applicant for registration for examination and registration the sum of 50 pesos for each certificate of CO registration issued without prior examination in accordance with the provisions of this act and the sum of 25 pesos so 50 25 and 10 so Again, the board shall charge the sum of 10 pesos. For example, you have lost it, you have destroyed it accidentally or mutilated your ZOR. It's just 10 pesos. Very cheap, right? But you're still wasting money if you're not taking care of your ZOR. Next, uh, when is the time that uh, the certificate of registration is will, will not be issued? So you will have a refusal to, to be issued with a COR. So to any person convicted by the court of competent jurisdiction of any criminal offense involving moral torpitude, what's that? So moral torpitude, uh, well, are crimes that are, uh, how, how shall I say, crimes like murder, like rape, robbery, kidnapping, uh, voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, uh, spice, spousal abuse, or mayhem. Those are crimes of moral torpitude or we can also say uh, or any to any person you cannot have your cor if you are guilty of immoral or dishonorable conduct like uh, you're having an poly um, you are married and you are committing adultery for example something like that or dishonorable conduct or unsound mind or insane you're, or you are having an incurable communicable disease like incurable infectious diseases include Ebola, we have poliomyelitis, we also have rabies. So those are incurable communicable diseases. So you will not have your COR if you are having these instances. Next, uh, revocation or suspension of certificates. So an administrative investigation shall be conducted by at least two members of the board. And the respondents shall be entitled to be represented by a county. You'll have your own attorney. You'll be heard in person and you are, you'll be given with a speedy and public hearing, speedy public hearing. And um, well, and all other rights guaranteed by the constitution. So don't worry if you are under this uh, scenario, like for example, your license and your CUR will be uh, revoked. So the board may reprimand, revoke, or suspend a COR of an earring empty. And by the board may, by majority vote, impose the penalty or reprimand of suspension. Like if you can say, oh, someone like our medic in the lab was suspended. So suspension not to exceed two years. And uh, section 27. 
talks about foreign reciprocity, recipro reciprocity. So no foreigner shall be admitted to examination or be given a certificate of registration or be entitled to any of the rights and privileges under this act unless the country, unless the country or state of which she is a subject or citizen allows Filipino medical technologies to practice within its territorial limits so reciprocity reciprocal right so again what is the most important thing unless the country or state of which she is a subject or citizen permits filipino medical technologies to practice within its territorial limits so if u.s allows that then you can become a medic in u.s or in norway or something like that. we also have rooster of medical technologies so once you will uh, pass the board exam your name will be included in the rooster of medical technologies so this rooster will be prepared annually yearly by the secretary secretary of the board and it shall contain the name your name your address your citizenship of all those registered medical technologists and it, and it includes you soon it will include you soon and the date of registration or issuance of certificate and lastly we are down to the uh, penal provisions what are those penal provisions they refer to the uh, codified body of the laws in any legal systems relate to crime and its punishment so what's the important thing please remember the fine of not less than 2,000, not more than 5,000, or an imprisonment of not less than six months and not more than two years. So just short, right? Six months to two years, 2,000 to 5,000. But I think uh, the, the courts are changing. Uh, I, I, I would really want that there's an amendment for this. This is like toothless for me, just 2,000, 5,000. What's that? And then six months to two years, very short. For example, if you have, you are practicing medical technology, but you are not registered. See, so you will be punishable under section 29. Or you are duly registered, but uh, you don't, without the necessary supervision of a qualified pathologist or physician. For example, you are operating your own lab you are doing uh, medical technology services, but without the presence of a duly registered physician or a qualified pathologist. Like you will tell yourself like, mm, I can do this. Like I'm, I'm the most, uh, I, I am the best intern before, so I can do this without uh, the physician trying to sign the result form without him supervising you. That's a big no-no, okay? Do not. Uh, try to do tests by your own and release them by your own as if you are a pathologist. And then any medical technologist who shall knowingly made a fraudulent lab report is very common. I know a lot of people in the past and in the present doing this. I'm sorry. So fraudulent lab report, especially now in the time of COVID, like the results is really positive, but they will just try to like... Uh, there is a, was a case in this in some hospitals, but I think they have, they have had the investigation for that. And I hope the, the, those perpetrators of the crime were punished. See fraudulent lab report. I, please refrain from doing this in the future. And any duly registered med tech who shall refuse or fail after due warning by the board to display take note this is very easy display his certificate of registration that's why previously i have told you that your cor has to be placed in the laboratory where you are working where it can easily be seen because it is you might be penalized if your cor you are working in a particular lab but your cor is not posted in your workplace well, for you, if, for example, if 2,000 or 5,000 is cheap, then hmm, you can hope not to display your COR. But I know all uh, good practicing laboratories, practicing the good uh, conduct will really have to display all CORs. And any person presenting or attempting to use as his own the certificate of registration of another, like, for example, you will use someone else's COR. 
no, a big no, no, or this one. Someone who shall give any false or fraudulent device of any kind to the board, therefore obtain a certificate of registration. Like this is falsification of uh, public documents still. Or any person who shall impersonate any registrant of a fake or the same manner. Like for example, you really have a studied medical technology, then you've known someone in the name of Juan de la Cruz and he he is a uh, practicing medical technology for 10 years and then you will try to impersonate him. Still punishable under this section. And any person who shall attempt to use a revoked or suspended certificate of registration. And then uh, rolling the ball, any person who shall in connection with his name otherwise assume, use, or advertise any title or description tending to convey the impression that he is a medical technologist without a valid COR. No COR, you cannot say to the world or publicize even an FB. And then any person who shall violate any provisions of this act. And then any person or corporate body who shall violate the rules and regulations of board or orders promulgated by it after having been duly approved and issued by the president of the Philippines. So that's it for our RA5527. And that's all folks. And please remember, don't focus on the pain, focus on the progress. Good day and thank you.